There's no reason to replace supply in this battle, but I have lost one officer, and actually losing only one is not that bad. And I had a couple guys on the bench. I had a colonel just waiting to replace a division commander, but okay, didn't lose one, and I had a major. So yeah, I, I always like to have officers on the bench for um, these multi-day battles in case I lose an officer. So, okay, um, normally I would replace um, the losses in artillery, but there's no reason to do that since day two is not going to be an artillery battle. Um, yeah, and I, I don't really need to put any money into supply because the allied units are going to bring plenty of supply. So that's all there is to do. And I have 36,000 men and the enemy has 1,900. So I have, you know, I'm just moving forward with this and, you know, I skipped all the beginning uh, screens. I've merged some units together and uh, created some larger size units. Uh, mainly it's going to get pretty crowded with all these units on the map and the enemy has less than what, 2,000? So there's the remains of this infantry unit. It's probably the infantry unit that almost got wiped out yesterday. That's what it looks like. And this is all that's left of him. So he's not going to last long. And there's, of course, as everyone knows, there's a cav unit somewhere. So we're going to run these guys down. Well, first we're going to find them, and we're going to run them down. Yep, Forrest is here, so we found him. Yep, we have found the entire, like, 1,900 starting troops, and now he's down to 1,600. So we'll put some hits on Forest, and uh, we only have these two units to wipe out, so this is going to be fun. And through the magic of editing, we finally run down this infantry unit, and he's not going to last long. So, and if you look at the strategic map, the three dots you see are, are the victory locations, and there's nothing there. And again, through the magic of editing, we surround forest. And the, the way you keep these guys from escaping is you, you have um, circles, like an inner circle and an outer circle. The, the forest can actually charge right through your infantry line, but if you have um, units that are two and three deep, he, he, the enemy tends not to be able to retreat through your line. So I want to have an infantry circle and then uh, detached skirmishers or skirmishers and snipers or, or cav, something, some, you know, something that's light and fast that goes inside that circle and fires at uh, forest. And what I should do is put another row of either detached skirmishers or infantry around the outside of even that. So have like three um, three circles, three, three positions. So I kind of have these guys a little bit staggered. You can see the, you know, there's like one kind of to the rear um, hold, holding the, the very edge of the water so he can't go that way. Because um, it's not enough to have guys put hits on this guy, you have to corner him somewhere and kill him. And I'm afraid in this position he can escape. So maybe he would just go into the corner of the map, I don't know. But I've had him escape out of this location and then kind of go to the left down the edge of the map. And um, 
it, he does eventually run out of space, but I just assume kill him here. So bring up some snipers, let the snipers get some more XP. And because I have big plans for my snipers, so this is all just fun. As my units rack up easy kills, and there we go. So he's just short of 40,000 casualties, that's great. Uh, 7,300, 7,400 for me. I have kind of, it's over five to one if I take out what the Allied troops did. It's more like six, six and a half to one for my troops overall. Um, but the big thing is everybody gets a star. Everybody gets a perk. It's And the promotions for the officers is just absolutely terrific. Could not be happier with the outcome of this battle. I think the hardest two battles are coming up. And the the big thing is about the army that I just got out of Shiloh and all the experience my units got, the next two battles are going to be a lot easier than they otherwise would be. And yeah, the 1855s got incredible kills. You know, that's just terrific. 24 pound howitzers. They're, um, one of the batteries is undersized and has still got a huge number of kills. So yeah, I could not be happier with that. Um, the Palmettos did a great job. The 1842s, I expected to take a lot of casualties, but they got more kills than I expected. The 10 pounders got a ton of 1600 kills for the 10 pounders. That's a great day. The farmers did a great job. They got almost as many kills as the my best uh, 1842s and did better than some of the 1842s. The snipers got 1400 kills. Um, man, that's just terrific. Um, and then the first allied unit shows up and he took 700 losses. So that's good. Um, the other farmer did really good. The 42 did okay. Uh, the 1842 still got over a thousand. The Sharps 59, that that little scruffy unit that I was even thinking I shouldn't even build, it was a waste of time. Got over a thousand kills. Um, did a terrific job. Um, the other sniper unit, you know, got fine over 900. Um, so yeah, actually the Sharps 59 was my calf, wasn't it? That was my calf, I think. Uh, two 10 pounders. Uh, yeah, two 10-pounder units did uh, over 800. That's terrific. And they were undersized, too. Um, the Sharps 55s, that was... Was that the... Yeah, I think, yeah, that was the scruffy little uh, um, skirmisher unit. Yeah, that was. And just did it, yeah, 750. That's terrific. The 6-pounders had a great day, about 650 and about 600. J.F. Browns. Terrific. 600 kills with 128 JF Browns. That's a good day. Everybody did well. Ex you know, and the Hunters, the Hunters were my worst unit. And hey, if they did anything, I'm happy because, hey, they have Hunters. The uh, only unit that did, like, nothing was the 12-pound Howitzer. So the 12-pound Howitzer was the only underperforming unit. And that was enough to get a perk. So, yeah, and here's the big story, Officer Corps. You've got to have an officer corps that can lead a good army or you will get huge command debuffs and you need a monster officer corps if you're going to have five corps. So um, I'm going to do a video on that at some point probably. But yeah, lots of units. I'm going to get lots of units in the field, if nothing else, to get promotions for building a big, powerful army. So look at all of that. That is terrific. So apparently he was armed with 1842s because I got a whole bunch of those and some reboard farmers because I got some of those. So I don't see anything else of any value. He had salt off shotguns. That's terrible. And Napoleons. Okay. So. And got Ulysses S. Grant, who is going to replace my avatar and become the new First Corps commander with two better perks. So this is the part that I really like. This is fun. Um, but always save first. Always, always save after a battle. Highly recommend because, man, you're going to want to reload. It's just, you're going to want to reload. So yeah, this is, 
this is fun. I really enjoy this part where I select the perks. And I like the uh, stealth bonus. Uh, marksmanship is fine, but I really like the stealth bonus. That That is really powerful when you stack those. You can stand right in front of the enemy army and they don't see you. That's um, That's terrific. That's great fun. And it comes in real handy when you're on the flank or rear of the enemy army and they don't know where you are. So, okay, everybody in first core now has perks, and I've got a lot of units with two perks. This is great. This unit is close to its second perk, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, buy a general. And, yeah, going into the next battle with two perks, that's lovely. So, yeah, and I'm going to upgrade all my artillery to eight guns per battery, and I should have enough... Um, I should have access now to enough 24-pound howitzers that I should have, I think, three batteries of 24-pound howitzers, and I should start to be able to buy some 20-pound uh, parrots um, and get some of those good units into the system, too. So that guy's within a small promotion of second star. That's, boy, that's disappointing. Maybe I'll take some time. I'm not going to show you all of camp right now. I'm just showing you where the army is. But um, obviously I'm going to think about moving my officers around. Well, as I, um, I had a conversation in uh, the comment section, I always move my officers around between battles. So you want to move your officers around to get extra perks and to make sure that the uh, command buff is greater than the efficiency level where there's a debuff. Um, so as much as possible, move officers around to get the best possible outcome. Also, uh, I move officers around going into side battles um, because, well, you only take so many units into side battles, so you're going to want to move your officers around for that so your best officers go into the side battles. Or guys who are close to promotion um, will go and get a promotion. So, yeah, think about all that. Where I want officers varies depending on if I'm going into a side battle or into a main battle. So, yeah, these guys are really close too. So I'm going to maybe spend some money and have two more units with, uh, with a star. Units are much, much better with a perk than without, so. And this guy's really close, so. I'm not going to leave Grant here, but, man, that just looks nice. Now, I have technically three two-star infantry units. No, four. Four two-star infantry units. Although one of them is going to lose the uh, a perk because Grant is obviously not going to stay there, so. But that's okay. Next battle, certainly we'll get the second perk. I'm just showing you both core, and they look great. Shiloh was a fun battle. Had a great time. Hope you enjoyed it, and I'll see you in camp. Thanks.